Hello, my name is Katherine Moy, and I'm the president of the Draft Horse and Driving Club at UC Davis. We are a student-run club, and we've been around for almost two decades. A great part about this club is that no previous horse experience is necessary. In this club, students will teach the new members everything they need to know, all the way from the basics of horse handling to harnessing and hitching. It's also not just open to students, but any UC Davis affiliates, including staff, teachers, etc. Members will have the chance to learn basic handling skills such as haltering, leading, and grooming. There are many ways of haltering a horse. In our club, we usually like to place the noseband over first and then put the rest of the halter over the pole and then fasten it. We also usually have a lead rope already attached to the halter. When leading the horses around the barn, we always like to have them on our right side. We are located at the UC Davis Horse Barn, and we have our own specific corner, which is where we keep all of our equipment. There are directions to how to get to this corner on our website. One of the first steps to grooming is currying, and currying can be done with a metal curry or a rubber curry, which is being shown here. You always want to start from the shoulder and then move your way back to the hips, starting from top to bottom, so to get all the dirt off. You're only supposed to curry on the main part of the body and not the legs. Okay, that's Brushing is the next step of grooming, and this can be done in two parts. A rougher bristled brush can be used first to get more dirt off, and then a soft bristled brush can be used to finish off um, getting off all the dirt and then kind of giving them a nice sheen, and it can be used on their face too since it's very soft. You can brush all parts of the body, including the face, the legs, the mane, since it's generally soft bristled yeah, just keep brushing her it hips doesn't really too, like, hurt any of the hair. Like, you wouldn't want to curry their mane because and it would probably rip like their mane her out and cause bit. damage to that hair. I can move. Can you make it so that her face isn't, like, pulling on that thing too much? Yeah. Once you're done grooming, harnessing can begin. You first start by putting the collar on, then the harness, then the lines, and finishing off with the bridle. To start harnessing, you must take the collar off of where it is being stored, and at the Draft Horse and Driving Club, we keep our girls in cross ties, so in order to put the collar on, we take the cross ties off for a brief moment, and they're trained to dip their head and fit into the collar, and you just slide that over their head and onto their neck, and it should fit perfectly, and we have fitted these harnesses for our girls. The next step is putting the harness on. In order to do this, such with the collar, you need to take it off of where it is being stored, which involves putting four parts of it on your shoulder at a time, which first goes with the breeching, then the spider, then the saddle, and then you hold the hames with your hands. You generally want to have a partner that can help you put the harness over because sometimes, like with this team harness, which is made of leather, it can be very heavy. But you start by putting the hames on below their withers, and you put the saddle on, the spider on, and the breaching on in the backwards, in the reverse order. Ready? After placing the harness on the horse, two people will coordinate with one another in order to lift the hames up into the collar, which will fit into the slits on the side, and then fasten it using the leather buckle on the bottom. It is important that the hames are fastened securely and tightly so that they don't have a chance to slip out of the collar 
when the horses are working. That can be very dangerous and we do our best to prevent it by tightening the hames as much as possible. After the hames are securely fastened, a team member will remove the false martingale, attach it to the other side of the collar, unclip it from itself, and they will feed that through the chest until the um, girth of the horse to fasten the cinch. And it, you will see in a second why it is important to have that false martingale um, above the cinch with the cinch like the tucking it up because you need to attach the quarter straps to the false martingale. Whenever when you're fastening any, any clips, clips on the harness, on the part of the harness you want to make sure that the part that opens, always which clips sure on, is facing that away the from the horse. clip part where Such you as with open, the quarter straps being it's shown always here. facing downward because sometimes it is possible for that clip the last to pinch part of the, the horse's skin, skin the which can be very uncomfortable under the tail and, and that. The only clip on that sides. goes facing toward the horse is the false martingale when you clip it to the other side of the collar. Okay, I'm just going to pull that. The third step of harnessing is putting on the lines, and it's important to know the difference between driving single and driving team because the lines are a bit different. The process is mostly the same though, you want to make sure that one of the lines goes over across their back and that both of the lines go through a ring that's located on their collar. And then you finish off by pulling it about to the length of where the bit would go and then letting it drop. You also want to butterfly the rest of the lines on the hames so that they aren't dragging anywhere. The last step is bridling. The halter can either be left on or taken off. The four steps of hitching single involves placing the poles in the pole holders, attaching the holdbacks, attaching the tugs, and then attaching the check chain. I gotta go. For single hitching, you must have pole holders as there are two poles that attach the horse to the cart. And when pulling the cart up to the horse, you wanna make sure that you go up and over the horse's hips. And then you will communicate with your team member when you get into the pole holders. After placing the poles on the correct spots on the harness, the members will begin to take the tugs, which are located at their hips on the spider, and fasten them onto the cart. And it's important to make sure that both the tugs are at the same length. The next step is clipping the holdbacks onto the ring located on their harness. The last step of single hitching is attaching the cinch that is attached to the pull holders, which is different from the cinch that was on the harness previously. Four steps of hitching team involve attaching the yoke to both of the horse's harnesses, attaching the tugs to the wagon, crossing the lines, and attaching the check chain. For a hitching team, you want to make sure that the horse that usually takes the lead on drives is put in after the other team members. That's fine. Instead of using poles to attach the horses to the wagon, we have a tree and a yoke. The tree is the red bar that has been in between the two horses, and the yoke is the yellow bar spanning across. Team members will attach the false martingale to the yoke, and then move back to put on the tugs. When putting on the tugs for a wagon, you always want to start with the inside and then move to the outside. It's just safer for you and the horse.
An interesting part about driving team is that you have to cross the lines. So when you place on the team lines, you have to make sure that the longer line is on the inside of the horse that you will know is going to be the inside. And it, then you actually take it off the bit and then you cross them, making sure that the taller horse's line is over the shorter horse's line. And you actually have to feed them through a ring so that they are they don't slip and like they're attached to each other. The reason for doing this is so that you don't have to have two sets of lines. Instead, you have one set of line, but at the end of each line there is a fork. Which, and by crossing these lines over, when you pull on one side of the line, both horses will get the same message. When driving our draft horses, we actually use a lot of vocal commands to communicate with them, not just the lines. Wo means stop, and you can give a nice calm wo. A nice firm all right makes them go or go at a faster pace. G indicates that they should be going right. Ha indicates they should be going left. Step up means they should step up their pace, go faster, but not break into the next gate. Easy means that they should slow at the same gate, so not break down to the previous one. And walk means to come down to a nice slow walk. Come G or come ha means that they're going to pivot, they should pivot um, instead of turning a wide turn so that you can make tighter turns. This video shows a quick demonstration of a come ha, which is making the horse pivot on a left turn. As you can see, she's crossing her legs instead of walking and then turning as she goes, so it's a tighter turn. This can be done in a complete circle. During some drives, we like to step up the girls to a trot. This is good for their exercise and it's fun for us. When you're holding the lines, you can hold them in the style of English right, where you have three fingers that are holding the line with your thumb on top and your pinky on the bottom. After you come back from a drive, you unhitch the girls, you bring them back into the barn, you've taken off their harnesses and collars. One of the important things that you need to do is tie up the lines that driving lines are tied up, which is being shown in this video. At first, it's kind of tricky and it can be hard to learn, but once you get it, you'll never forget it. And this is one of the many skills you can learn at the Draft Horse and Driving Club. One of the most exciting events that this club gets to participate in is Picnic Day. We're really sad that we haven't been able to participate these past few years, but we're hoping that next year we will be able to do so. It's very fun to get the girls all done up fancy and go in the parade.
If you would like to learn more about this club, please feel free to email us or message us through our other forms of social media. Thank you, we hope to see you soon.